For the first assignment, we're creating a 12-hue color wheel or hue circle. You're going to do this with a combination of painting and slicing and dicing and fabricating or constructing the wheel itself. Per the project specs, you'll see that it fits on a 9 by 12 gray background. The yellow will be at the top, red will be at 4 o'clock, blue will be at 8 o'clock. So the three primaries are set equal distance from each other on the circle. You will need to label the hues around. You can handwrite them or print them out however you want to do it as long as it's neat. What we want is a well executed circle. Okay, so looking at this a little more closely, you'll see that each one of these hue sections is separate from the other. In other words, the individual chips of color are cut out of the swatches that are painted on Bristol. And then the whole thing is glued and the whole thing is cemented together onto the background. And so you're not going to be painting a single device, a single circle that's divided into 12 sections. You're painting and trimming out 12 separate chips of color and putting them all together, combining them all into the hue circle. Doing this will give you the ability to select the right color to represent the hue family. Okay, so this is the Canson Me Tientis paper and it's cut to 9 by 12. It is a middle value gray, which is what we're looking for. So you're going to put this on a gray backing. And each individual swatch is going to be cut to a particular shape. And you determine that shape based on the hue circle template. So the hue circle template is provided for you. It, it's linked in the assignment. The lines are very thin to allow for more accurate cutting. So then rubber cement or paper cement is how you are going to adhere or cement the swatches to the paper. The reason we use this is so that you can remove and replace. So uh, we don't use glue sticks, we don't use school glue, we don't use mucilage, we don't use spray mount. So basically you want to put the rubber cement where the swatch is going to go. And I've already laid out, you can see I've got a pencil line there that I'm going to erase. And that is my vertical guideline. Uh, I'm also centering this 7 inch hue circle in the center of the 9 by 12. So what you do is put the rubber cement where you want it to go but not too far beyond that because you want to keep things fairly clean. It is a petroleum product, so it will stain. So you don't want to get it all over your surface. You're going to let that dry. So this is really important. Uh, thin coat, let it dry, leave it alone. Okay, so uh, we'll just work with this swatch. And uh, so that's going to go right here. And so here's our template. So I'm going to turn the swatch over and I'm going to tape it down. Then I'm going to put the template on top of the swatch. And I'm also going to tape that down. Come in with an X-Acto blade sharp blade and a cutting edge to cut accurately place the blade first and because this is bristle and thick take a couple passes until you feel the blade actually cut through and get into the smoothness of your cutting mat
do not try to cut things through on the first pass. It's just easier to exercise the patience of taking two or three passes until you cut through. And what you're going to do now, since you've already got the rubber cement here, pick this up by the edges. So don't handle it on the painted surface, handle it on the edges, turn it to the back side, and apply rubber cement from the center out in all directions. And that's really important because if you try to do it side to side or edge to edge and just go straight across the swatch, you might drag rubber cement onto the painted side and then you'll have to repaint your swatch or recut it if your uh, original swatch area was large enough. And then you let this dry. So my recommendation is that you cut all your swatches, apply the rubber cement to the back. While those are drying, you deal with this in terms of laying out your seven inch circle and figuring out the uh, middle and where, depending upon the, uh, the, the shape of your swatch, uh, where that yellow is going to line up. Remember, yellow is going to be here, violet, its uh, complement is going to be here, and then everything flows from there. So I don't know if you can see it, but there's a faint graphite pencil line around and then that uh, this line which is also pencil is going to get erased so it takes a few minutes for this to dry and you know it's dry when it's not shiny so you have a little bit of time to wait so I'll wait a couple more minutes and it's always a good idea to recap this so it doesn't dry out too quickly Okay, so the swatch is now dry, so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to grab it just very lightly with the point of the knife. And then I'm going to lay it in, line it up, position it, and press it down. and that's got to be replaced. So what I'm going to do there to show you how to replace a swatch if you need to, and this is why we use the rubber cement, you just loosen it, get rid of that yay so we still have rubber cement there so 
So this is the replacement swatch for that orange, which wasn't working because it was too transparent and not robust enough. going to redo this. Again, thin coat. Let it dry. Okay, so I'm now ready to uh, put the new swatch in place, and it's basically the same idea. I'm going to grab it like that. Basically push it into place. So again, with the rubber cement, you coat both surfaces, let both surfaces dry. That's the best way to work with this and still allow for repositioning. So then you have the rubber cement pickup. And this is used, obviously. Uh, but what this does is you use it to clean up the dried, not the wet, but the dried rubber cement. So you just get rid of everything that's sticking out that's going to catch dust and dirt. Be careful not to get it onto the surface of the gouache. And if necessary, you can actually take a blade and slice this and get smaller, uh, make smaller pieces out of this. But this just cleans up everything nicely. gets rid of all the excess residue that you don't want there in your presentation. And remember, professional presentation is what you're going for. Clean, orderly, neat, everything well-crafted. Think of it as if you are presenting for a client. Then when that's all cleaned up, come in with a uh, slip sheet and you can tighten it down this way or you can use the roller or brayer. If you uh, have one of these on hand, uh, they do come in handy and all you do is just roll the thing. But again, use the slip sheet so that you're not rolling right on top of the surface of the wash. And I usually do the slip sheet and this after everything is placed. So you have your hue circle complete and all your component parts, your labels and everything if you are printing those out and applying them. And then you just apply some pressure like this and it tightens everything down. So that's basically it. And then you want to uh, erase all your marks and everything that are still visible after you put everything down. Hue contrast will cause the orange, which is made up of yellow and red, to appear more yellow next to the red by virtue of the red will blend, but the yellow will stand out. And then on the other side, the orange will appear more red against the yellow because now it's contrasting, now the, now the red is contrasting with the yellow instead of the yellow contrasting against the red. And so that gives you an interesting visual effect.
right along the edge, there's going to be a reddish glow, and right along the other edge, the, the other edge of the orange is going to be a yellowish glow. There is a distance. There, there is a uh, uh, area that uh, the yellow will extend before the orange kind of uh, the the orange perception takes over, and there's an area or distance that the red extends, and those two bands of yellowishness and reddishness need to be equal. That's how you know that this is a good orange that sits exactly visually midpoint, halfway between red and yellow. So this is a pretty good candidate. If I take something that has a lot more yellow in it, The yellow comes out a lot further, and the red hugs much more tightly against the border. So you're looking for the equal distance, the same distance on either side. This one appears more yellow further into the center of the swatch, and a lot less red. The red is just hugging real tight right along here. And sometimes this takes uh, some getting used to, to understand and to be able to perceive, but this is part of your eye training, to be able to understand hue contrast and color interaction. And when you have a secondary or a tertiary hue uh, that is sitting between the two primaries, there will be what appears to be a visual gradation from, in this case, more yellow to more red, but the swatch itself is a flat color. Is this a good red-orange candidate? Is it too red or is it too yellow? It's a little on the red side. It's closer to red than it is to the orange. So I'm going to back it off a step and try something. It's interesting. This is looking almost this color next to the red, and it's not going quite strongly red as it should. So this is actually the better candidate. It's the same distance from the orange as it is from the red. And if we look at the banding, the yellowness is prominent and then the reddishness is prominent and they're about equal. So this is a good red-orange candidate.